Chapter 1. The Perfect Day Samantha had always envisioned her birthday as a day filled with laughter and love. Growing up, it was the one day a year when she felt like the center of the universe. Friends and family would gather, celebrating her existence with a cacophony of smiles, gifts, and sweet treats. But this year, turning 32 felt different. As she entered her apartment, decorated with balloons and streamers, she was met with a hollow silence. Her husband, Mark, had promised to make this birthday special, but a gnawing feeling in her gut warned her that something was off. She brushed aside her doubts, focusing on the small details, the fragrant candles flickering on the dining table, the cake resting temptingly in the fridge. Yet Mark's absence loomed larger than the decorations. Chapter 2. The Phone Call. Hours passed, and as the evening descended, Samantha tried to reach Mark. He was out running errands, he'd said earlier, but as the minutes turned into hours, her heart raced with worry. With each ringing phone call going unanswered, panic bubbled inside her. Was he okay? Finally, just as she was about to give in to her fears, her phone buzzed. It was a message from Mark, a simple text. Hey babe, I'm caught up with a friend. I'll be home soon. Relief washed over her, but something in the tone felt off. When Mark finally walked through the door, the smile on his face didn't reach his eyes. Happy birthday, Sam, he exclaimed, but she could tell he wasn't fully present. It was as if he was here physically, but miles away emotionally. Chapter 3. The Revelation As they sat down to eat the cake, Mark's phone buzzed incessantly on the table. Curiosity mixed with dread made her glance at the screen. A name she didn't recognize flashed across the display, Ava. Mark grabbed the phone quickly, forcing a smile that didn't quite hide the tension in his shoulders. Just a friend from work, he lied, but the words felt empty. That night, after a tense dinner, Samantha lay in bed, thoughts racing. She could hardly sleep, tossing and turning as doubts clouded her mind. Was Mark hiding something from her? Did he even care about her anymore? The next morning, as sunlight streamed through the curtains, she awoke to an empty space beside her. Mark had left before sunrise, and his phone remained behind, buzzing with notifications. Curiosity gnawed at her again, and against her better judgment, she unlocked it. What she found shattered her heart. A series of messages revealed a connection between Mark and the mysterious Ava, a flirtation that had escalated quickly over the last few days. The last message sent, sent shivers down her spine. Can't wait to see you tonight. Just us. Chapter 4. Confrontation. Samantha's world collapsed as she pieced together the truth. Mark had cheated on her and what hurt more was the timing. It was her birthday. The pain was visceral, a physical ache that throbbed in her chest. Desperate for answers, she called his best friend, Danny, and then his brother Jake, along with Jake's wife, her own best friend, Lily. They arrived at her apartment, concern etched on their faces. After a few tense moments, Mark walked through the door, confusion and defensiveness written all over him. I know everything, Samantha said, her voice shaking but steady. You cheated on me. The silence that followed was deafening. Mark's facade crumbled as he admitted to the betrayal, claiming that their recent arguments had driven him to seek comfort elsewhere. I was tired of fighting, he said, his eyes darting away from her. It was just a mistake. Samantha felt anger surge through her. A mistake? You slept with another woman on my birthday, Mark. How could you? He shrugged, dismissing her pain as if it were a mere inconvenience. You wanted me to talk to you, to share my feelings. But we always end up fighting. It was just a release. Chapter 5. The Abyss. Days turned into weeks, each one a painful reminder of her shattered trust. Mark moved back and forth between pleading for forgiveness and dismissing her feelings, often blaming the cocaine he claimed had fueled his decision. But to Samantha, the substance was just another excuse another way to evade accountability. 
Grief over the loss of her father only added to her emotional turmoil. Five months ago, her dad had passed away, and she had relocated across the country to support Mark and their life together. Now, she felt more isolated than ever, trapped in a home filled with memories of a love she thought was strong. The mornings were the hardest. She'd wake up alone, staring at the space beside her in bed, haunted by the ghost of the man she once knew. The weight of her dependency on him, both financially and emotionally, suffocated her. Chapter 6. Seeking Support Feeling lost, Samantha reached out to her friends and family for support. She began attending a local support group for those grappling with betrayal and loss. It was there she met Lisa, a kindred spirit who had faced similar heartache. They bonded over shared experiences, and Lisa encouraged Samantha to rediscover her strength. You're not alone in this, Sam, Lisa said during one meeting. You have to choose yourself first. You deserve better than this. The words resonated deep within her, igniting a flicker of hope. She started to explore new interests, enrolling in a painting class, and signing up for yoga sessions. With each brushstroke and every deep breath, she began to reclaim her identity, untethering herself from the toxic bonds of her marriage. Chapter 7. The Turning Point One evening, while she was painting, Samantha received a text from Mark. He wanted to talk, to apologize again. A mix of emotions churned within her. But this time, she felt a sense of empowerment. Samantha agreed to meet him at a cafe. As she sat across from him, she looked into his eyes and saw the man she once loved broken, confused but still there. You hurt me deeply, Mark, she said, voice steady but I need to prioritize my healing. Mark's eyes widened. Are you saying you want a divorce? I think it's what's best for both of us, she replied, tears stinging her eyes. I can't live like this anymore. I need to find my happiness again. Chapter 8. The Road Ahead The weeks that followed were challenging but transformative. Samantha navigated the complexities of divorce, leaning on her friends, and newfound passions for support. She felt the weight of her old life lifting, replaced by the lightness of possibility. Mark moved out, and as painful as it was, Samantha felt a strange sense of relief. She finally had the space to heal, to grieve the loss of her father and the illusion of her marriage. With each passing day, she grew stronger, embracing her independence. Chapter 9. Rebirth. Months later, as spring bloomed outside her window, Samantha sat in her living room, surrounded by canvases splashed with vibrant colors. She had found a new rhythm, a sense of joy she hadn't felt in years. Her heart was still tender, but it was learning to love again this time, herself. At a local art fair, she showcased her paintings, drawing in curious onlookers. With every compliment and every smile, she felt the remnants of her old self fading, replaced by a woman unafraid to embrace her truth. Chapter 10. A New Beginning One evening, while sipping coffee with Lisa, they talked about their dreams. What do you want to do next? Lisa asked, a glimmer of excitement in her eyes. I want to travel, Samantha replied, a spark igniting within her. I want to see the world, to find beauty in every corner. Lisa beamed. Let's plan a trip together. You deserve to explore, to feel free. Samantha nodded, the thrill of adventure coursing through her veins. She was ready to write a new chapter, one filled with hope, healing, and endless possibilities. The pain of betrayal no longer defined her, it had fueled her rebirth. As she stepped out into the world, she felt lighter than air, ready to embrace whatever came next. No longer would she be shackled by the ghosts of her past, Instead, she would paint her future with the vibrant colors of resilience and self-love, one brushstroke at a time.